So I found out by feeling my breasts, right? I encourage women to do that monthly exam in the shower. Um, and for me, it was soaping up my hands so they're slippery, being able to feel around on, on our breasts. We have to know our bodies to know when something changes. That's vital. Uh, and so I did find my own lump and I had just finished breastfeeding probably three years prior to finding the lump. And I'm not saying there's a connection, but I do know based on some of the information that I've um, inundated my sub with over the last four years that there can be an injury on site um, and then cancer can you know form around that with DNA damage and all that stuff so there's lots of ways it happens but I remember having this damage almost in the same place when I was breastfeeding and had mastitis so the, the area was familiar to me and I thought oh that's nothing that I had a bump there before right because I had a problem with that so I kind of put it off which a lot of us do we either rationalize in our own minds oh it's nothing or we say we're scared and we say I don't want to I don't want to know if it is something you know there's lots of reasons we don't go forward and at the time I was also um, not doing mammograms, which was a huge mistake because my mom had breast cancer and I knew my chances of experiencing it were higher because there was not a genetic link that we found so far, but certainly a genetic history. So uh, I should have been doing it, you know, and I wasn't for all kinds of reasons, one of which being my idea about the radiation, which is, you know, not completely false, but completely foolish. <laughs> if you're talking about your health being your priority, Sometimes you, you have to take a, a little bit of something you don't want to get a bigger benefit. And had I been doing uh, mammograms, now the recommendation is 40. I hear they just changed it again, right? So had I, I think at the time it was 45, but anyway, had I been doing them as I should have, um, they would have found this lump before I did and the, the path out of this probably would have been a little easier. But uh, nevertheless, that's how I found it. As a black woman, and most black women have, I have um, higher kind of fibrous breasts, they call it. So I have a lot of granular feeling, lumpy things in my breast anyhow. So sometimes it's difficult to tell the difference between what's what. Um, when I felt the, the tumor that I then months later found out was actual cancer, it felt different. And I was like, oh, it stops you. You go, oh, <laughs> that's different. And, and then you have to figure out, you know, your path forward. Um, so my path forward uh, started with way more integrated or way more um, what we call alternative. I call it natural. Uh, and, you know, unfortunately, I didn't have the early detection. So I didn't have the benefit of time being on my side. And the longer time went with me doing the alternative way, and I did literally everything. I mean, I have a list that is mind blowing of how much I spent, how much I did. Either way, it's expensive. Um, but it wasn't working. And it was helping me in some ways, it was supporting my body, but it wasn't killing the cancer. And so I had to sit with myself and go, listen, the goal is living, not being stubborn, right? And because of that, I had to open myself up to what uh, we call an integrative approach, or I had to do a bit of conventional. I had chemotherapy, but I did a 10% genetically targeted insulin potential. I did a very fancy chemo, right? Um, and that allowed me to keep my body's health uh, high and which is great because then you know your body has to heal you out of it ultimately drugs are super helpful right I'm way open to drugs now um, and I wasn't in the beginning but I see the benefit for myself I, I know for myself I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the chemotherapy and I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my discipline and all of it has had to come together uh, in this journey so it's been interesting it's been a gift in some ways though uh, because I never would have looked at the stress in my life. I never would have looked at my relationships. I never would have checked myself in a lot of ways. I never would have stopped some of my bad habits, right? Alcohol and cancer, the connection is clear and it's massive. Stress and cancer, connection is very clear. Um, there are a lot of things we all do that we just take for granted until we can't take them for granted anymore. I lost a little bit of my eyebrows, um, but because the, the fractionated chemotherapy is what I did, it's like a tenth of what you would normally do in conventional, and they've tested to make sure that that chemo you use will kill your particular cancer. So again, it's very specialized. It's not something they do in conventional right now, which I, I hope they you know, start to transform into um, a different way to look at even what they do, because it is important. Um, and it was also insulin potentiated because what they know is that 
cancer feeds on sugar. If I understood what I know now 15 years ago, I can guarantee you I'd be in a healthier body and I may never have developed cancer because my body developed this. An alien didn't come land and put an egg in me that was cancer, right? Your body does this for certain reasons. There are pathways that cause this and there are things we can do to prevent it. And that's not to say you're gonna always prevent it. There are some genetic components or some things you can't avoid. But I know if you're doing your part in your body, whatever you end up experiencing is gonna have less of an effect on you because you're gonna be in a healthier body. That's just facts. I read a lot as a kid. I was able to really just access what was naturally in front of me physically, right? My grandma was a real Renaissance woman who was one of the survivors of the Tulsa massacre in 1921. She was a little girl, um, but her family, you know, my grandfather was hidden by his employer. Um, he was employed by a big white company, I think, and I well, wasn't there, but from the stories I've heard, they gathered all the men who worked for them who were black men, and they took them to a safe place. Um, my great-grandmother said it was outdoors, um, and they held them there until the, the mobs moved through to save their lives. Um, and I'm sure it was to save their business, but whatever the reason my grandfather, my great-grandfather lived, um, my great-grandmother took her four children, my grandmother was one of them at the time, and hid them under the house and left the doors open because they heard the mobs were coming through, gathering people up and just murdering them. Children, men, women, didn't matter. They were taking anybody out, you know, there's a, a, a revving up that happens with that kind of mob mentality. So she hid, she and her children under the house, the mob walked through the house and walked out because there was no one there. So my great grandparents were really smart people and my grandmother because of them was a really smart woman. And she sewed and grew her own food and I remember her raising chicks and rabbits. I hope we didn't eat any of those, but I don't remember. Um, she was a very independent and renaissance woman and I learned a lot from her so instead of we didn't have cable and I didn't watch a ton of TV but I watched her. You know I didn't grow up with cable and I don't even know if we had cable when I was little what am I talking about? Well I grow up as in like when cable was finally a thing I had friends who had it like when MTV was around in the 80s and Michael Jackson was on and but it was good um, I never had it, so I didn't get, not talk and move, I didn't get to kind of be inundated with the pop culture of the time. My grandma had on soap operas and Kojak and Hawaii Five-0. I mean, I watched Gilligan's Island and I Dream a Genie as a kid, so I, I, did, I didn't really grow up with, with um, the access to that. You know, I remember hearing about Teen Summit when the audition came up and I had no idea what it was because I didn't have cable. I couldn't afford cable in college, so I didn't have it then. And nobody in my family was paying for cable, so. I remember seeing Michael Jackson for the first time, but it was on an award show or something. And I don't remember when it was, because my brain doesn't really work like that anymore. Like, I just have a vision of it, but I don't have the details. And I remember that being amazing. I remember falling fully in love with Michael Jackson during the off the wall days. And I remember my grandmother taking the, um, the tape cassette tapes children, taking the cassette tape and crushing it because he was talking about an illegitimate child in Billie Jean. She wouldn't let me have it. 